That's just ready to go, man. So, how you doing, bro? Oh, there we go, bro. Man, I'm blessed, dude. I'm blessed, dude. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we were saying it's 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 you you said it's fast. It's gone fast this year, but also there's lots of stuff happening, lots of info left, right, and centre. But it's true, man. I mean, it's Friday again. I can't believe it's Friday again. Which is it's just <sighs> seems to be so fast, weekend to weekend. But the info flying out is just mad. I mean, like. England has just dropped all restrictions. All restrictions are dropped in England now? All I mean, I'll tell you I think, this. I think they're doing the NHS mandate still, but I think that's going to go as well. I really do. NHS mandate? What's that exactly? That's the National Health Service. So that's the... Um, you, see, you see when you saw all those nurses dancing on TikTok? Remember right. they're, they're, all, they're all dancing in the pandemic. Um, that that's the NHS. So that's our national health service. They're, they're our hospitals, really, um, and we've got a few private ones, but it's mainly the NHS. But um, they were supposed to be getting mandated, so they had to have a COVID vaccine by, by April. But it looks like they may be dropping that now. I think there's like 80,000 people in the NHS. That's what they're saying on mainstream, but there's 80,000 people at least because that's what they say, so it's probably more. But it's 80,000 people who are saying no, they're not going to take any vaccine, so they're going to have a massive shortage of staff. So apparently they're going to drop it, but I, I don't know. I mean, I think they will. I, I always thought they'd drop it. I always did. I, I spoke to a lawyer, um, a couple of lawyers actually, and they were saying they're preparing cases from people ready to sue the government um, if they do go ahead and mandate. So I don't, I, don't, I never thought it would go ahead, but we'll see. But what's it like over in where you are now in America? What's it like? Well, over here, man, um, to be honest with you, for one, like I've said before, I've never did change my life, me personally. And mm -hmm. now most people, even though, I mean, where I'm at, most things are all lifted, um, but it kind of goes state by state. Um, and sometimes even city by city, because in New Orleans, you got to have, you know, the ID cards and, you know, like the Vax ID cards and different things like that in New Orleans, which is like only 30 minutes away from me, but where I'm at, um, we pretty much can do whatever we want, um, without, you know, masks or ID cards, but really in all reality, especially here, I can't really talk to anywhere else, but we the people just need to stop doing what they're telling us to do. And we could have done that in the very, very beginning. We could have said, hey, we're not going to do this nonsense. This is tyranny. We could have even told President Trump, look, we're not going to stop. The, we're not going to take two weeks off to stop the slow. I mean, to stop the spread. And to be honest with you, during that time, I did everything I normally did anywho. <laughs> during those two weeks. I mean, there was really, you know... Um, I've never been sick, nothing like this. So basically over here, man, everything is starting to, and what, what's happening in Canada right now is just, it's so freaking awesome. Um, and I'm kind of happy that it happened in that, that a lot of things, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things in the United States of America, but I'm loving seeing that like groups of like, I want to see it happen here too. Right. But I'm loving seeing that it's that, other countries are doing things first, if that makes sense, before we're doing them things. And so we're not really follow. We're just going to do it as well, right? But we're following their lead instead of all the time. We're, and people are supposed to follow our lead. But I think they know what we have and they know what they want as far as freedom. We have a little bit more freedom and really, I mean... We can also discuss if we are really free here as well, right? <laughs> but um, we have a little bit more freedoms than everywhere else. Or in most places, you know, we still do have our weapons and everything like this um, as well. So they they get too tyrannical and, you know, there's, a, there's like five trillion tons of ammo, <laughs> you know, that we the people have. So they're going to have a lot to deal with. But... We don't want to go there, right? We don't want to get there. But to see other people, like what they're doing in Canada, what's happening in, like in New Zealand and over in, like, it's just, it's awesome to see everybody coming together, like, 
you know, and seeing this, but pretty soon, for anybody out there that's listening in America, if I was you, I would go and, you know, I've been stocking up over the last few weeks because basically these truckers are about to go ride to Washington, D.C. here, and then, you know, we might need a couple of months, you know, a, a couple of weeks worth of food or something like that. Um, I would be doing that all across the world, if I, you know, in all reality, because if truckers strike, things go away for a while, right? <laughs> so, um, but we need that, right? We need things like that to happen. So, but yeah, that's where I'm at here, man. We um, just loving life, blessed, and um, mainly, you know, you know my main goal, I'm seeking the kingdom. And if, if we can bring the kingdom, which is God's government to earth, like it's supposed to be, none of these tyrannical governments around here could touch that, right? So we'll be good to go. Well, I think that, you see, we're getting to the Canada thing, like they needed to, they absolutely needed to do something because it was starting to become like Australia. It really was. I mean, some of the things they were saying there, and I mean, you see over here, it's been pretty much, for me anyway, the same as you, where I've just carried on doing my exact same stuff. In fact, some things have been even better. Um, and, you know, there's been a, a, for the whole time, I mean, it's two years now. This has been going on for two years. And there is certainly people like myself that just haven't paid attention to this nonsense where they can and just carried on with their lives. And we're the people that you see in the shops without the masks on and, of net, you don't have the fear in their eyes, and I've said that from from day one. And that I, I think over here in the UK, I think they just they might have just realised that. I mean, there's a lot of pressure actually because there's a few of these cases that are coming against the police. Who knows if they're going to come to anything? But I think they have, I think they just realised that it doesn't matter what you do now. All of these people that have not had a vaccine are not going to take a vaccine, no matter what. And you know, I mean, that's logic, really. At some point, you're going to hit that point in your plan where you're going to go, well, these people are never going to do it. <laughs> right. And perhaps well, it's a bit of that as well, but whatever's happening, it's not just unvaccinated people, bro. It's vaccinated people who have had two doses. It's vaccinated people who have had three doses. It's, you know... Dude, everybody's sick of this, going, bro. Yep, yep. Exactly. Just, Everybody you know, is they sick chose, of this. They chose to Because do the it. thing that's is... We chose to do it, but now we're choosing not to do it, and you can't enforce that. And that's where they're drawing the line. They're going, this this enforcement stuff and this, like, and I don't think exactly. they expected that. I don't know. I mean. No. But no, it, they it expected. Changed in England. They expected. England's crazy. England's just flipping. Right. Well, would I feel, I'm sorry, I thought you were about done, but would they, what I feel they expected is they expected everybody who went and got the shot, Right was all of a sudden going to be so pro shot that they had, a, oh, you got to go get it. You got to go get it. And they maybe thought maybe 5% of the people that went and got the shot or maybe 2% would have said, no, you shouldn't be forcing everybody. Right. They thought it was going to be a very low percentage that went and got the shot that says, no, you don't have to force it. You shouldn't be forcing it. Instead, what's happening. It's like 90% of the people that got the shot are also saying, no, I got it, but it shouldn't be a forced situation. Right. You shouldn't make it a mandate. Yes. So it flipped on them. And the thing is, I mean, how good. I mean, I also think it's flipping because now all these people that did go get the shot and, I, you know, get it, not get it. That's totally up to you. Right. That's freedom. But I would suggest. And like you said, the people that got it already got it. The people that didn't get it yet are not going to get it unless for some reason they feel they're forced to get it by their jobs or something like this. But. And I think those people even already have gotten it, if that makes sense, to where their job was saying we're going to force it or you got till this date to do it. Because there was a lot of, I mean, my brother works at a company that basically um, March 18th was the end day. Like they had to have it by March 18th because it was one of the companies, he worked for a company that has over 100 employees. Well, he was going to leave if that happened. Well, just last week, thank God, they, the CEO, whatever, woke up and said, hey, look, I still believe in it, but I'm not going to mandate it anymore. Well, that's all we need. You can believe in it all you want. As long as you don't mandate it, we good to go. I don't need to agree with you on the actual shot. We just need to agree that it shouldn't be a forced situation. It shouldn't be a mandate, right? So 
Um, 100%. And that's where they thought that they were going to be able to, they thought they were going to have all these so-called vaccinated people, which I, I think still, I mean, you know, they're trying to say that it's 80%. Some people think it's 50% in the United States. I think it's more probably like 30% of the people in the United States got it. Maybe I might be wrong. Maybe it is 50%. Definitely not 80%. Because they wouldn't be freaking out if it was 80% of the people that got it, right? They wouldn't be like, oh, then you get it. But the bottom line is, is the thing is, that, like before I did any research, right, for a person like myself, right, before I did any research on the actual vaccine, quote unquote, right, which you can't even call it that because they had to change the definition to make this fit a vaccine, right? But the one time in my life, and I know quite a few people that, I mean, I've seen another YouTuber, uh, the conservative twins, he had the same type of story. But the one time in my life, of my adult life, I got the flu twice in my life. Once when I was a young kid and once at 22 years old, right? The, the problem of your life, supposedly, right? I'm in the military and they tell me to go get, I had to get, you know, a flu shot. Right, because you're in the military, you get the flu shot. All right. Well, first time I remember ever getting a flu shot, but that's cool. Boom, get the flu shot. Well, next thing you know, I was sick for eight days with the flu. Like I had a crawl into sick call three days, because when you're in the military, you can't just call in sick or nothing. You gotta actually go and show them that you're about to die before they send you home, or they just give you medicine. So I had the three days. My wife, my ex-wife now, but she had to basically. I was crawling into the doctor's office three of those eight days. For one, the thing that when I think back on it, that really, so basically I did not want to get anything else shot into me. I don't care what it is because the last time I got something that was supposed to pre prevent me from getting something that gave it to me. So who knows if I went and got this, it wouldn't give it to me, but they don't even have it in there. But the other thing is, right, about that same story, when I thought back on it, you know, about a, a year ago, whatever, of that time. And I was making, you know, I was, I was talking about why I wasn't getting the vax or whatever, just like I just did because of that situation. You know what else? What? I was 22 years old, about to die of the flu, three days crawling into the doctor's office, and not one person put a mask on when I went into that doctor's office. Not one person was scared of me when I went into that doctor's office. Once I was supposedly, once I said I was feeling better, they didn't wow. stick something into the back of my head to touch the back of my eye to tell me that I was better. They didn't make me quarantine. I went right to work the very next day when I felt like I was going to die four days before. I went right to work when I felt better. So, you, just nailed you know, it, yeah. you've, you've just nailed it's just it. like all of a sudden it's nonsense, <laughs> right? That's going on now. So. I think there's a lot of people, even the ones that were all wrapped. I mean, there's so much ignorance going on now. I mean, just to, to I, I, it's it, there's no there's no way in my in my opinion. This is my opinion. This is Christian Supreme's opinion. But there is no way in the world that Joe Biden and his administration is really in control. This dude just made crack. So. Just, just just came out with a a, a bill that's going to give crack pipes and syringes out. Like, I mean, this is Bro, literally what they vid. just did. <laughs> I, I saw and, your vid. I saw your vid. But you can't get ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. But they're going to give crack pipes and they syringes out. Pipe. So, like, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you got twenty two of these vaccines. If you went and got them every other day. That is going to wake you up. Like, they don't want to give you something that can make you feel better, but they're going to give you crack pipes? <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's a common what? World. It doesn't seem right. So, I mean, but, I mean, and we could go, and I think we talked about this before, but we can go all the way back to the very first day this dude was inaugurated and the three executive orders he signed. I can't remember the third one right off the top of my head, but one, shut down the, the, the pipeline in the United States. Basically, we were paying about a dollar, depending on where you were at, you were paying in between a dollar twenty nine and a dollar sixty nine for gasoline in the United States. He shuts that pipeline down. Now we're paying three dollars and nine cents to three dollars and eighty nine cents in the United States. 
right? And then uh, you probably where you're at, you probably wish you were paying that, right? But because I know y'all's are different, but so well, no, that's bro, the first thing. Ash has gone up as well. I, like for what are you right, pay, right? Like, it's it's doubled, it's doubled, and in some cases tripled. It's 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 crazy to fill a tank. But y'all pay a lot more than three dollars though, right now, right? Oh, we're paying. I don't even know, but I know that it. I know that it cost me at least double. It's about double and a half for what I what I paid right. for a year ago. Seriously, right. it's crazy. Because now we're getting it from Russia and Saudi Arabia, who really don't like us. I, I, it's just nuts, it's, right? So, I mean, but Trump liked Russia, right? But they just gave the gas, the, the energy industry, back to Russia. But Trump was the one who liked Russia when they made them. Uh, just that makes sense, right? But so. Yeah. And then the next one he did was he made it legal for biologically born men to play women's sports in college. So two things, the very the two first things that this dude did on the very first day, I can't remember there was a third one that he did that was pretty outrageous, but those two things right there on the that was the very first things that he did as a president. Like what would you like how could you think that on the very first day those two drastic measures should have been taken if you were really in control? There's no way. So I can't, I can't but that's like I said, I have no proof of it. It's Christian Supreme's opinion. But I don't feel that these people are in control. I mean, now they give out they make a bill to where you give out crack pipes. I mean, who could like who could even think to do that? Like that's a that's a that's a, a movie, a comedian sketch. But this is the thing. There's a certain entity. There's a certain entity named Q that's told us that we've been watching the movie. You'll be watching the movie. So maybe that's just the funny part of the movie because now they're giving out crack pipes. The president's giving out crack pipes. I mean, that's pretty funny, right? <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't true, it's pretty freaking funny. Right? I mean, who would have thought? <laughs> Honestly, it's like a Tim Dillon sketch or a Joe Rogan sketch. I swear to you, it's like or or a, a Chappelle sketch. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. When when I saw that vid come up on your channel, I was like, what, what? And on, in in each country, we've all got our crazy stuff going on. S seriously, each individual country has their own pile of crazy stuff going on. But when I saw that, I thought they're doing what? They're giving out crack pipes. What is going on? Where's prevention? Where's help? Where's and that and, and listen, we've got the same stuff over here. I walked into the doctors, and I think I told you this, and they did a blood pressure test, and they were like, "Yeah, what we'll do is we'll bring you back in again, and if it's still high, we'll put you on something." That was the first thing they said, and I was like, "What? No, you won't. You won't put me on anything." And you know, no, no healthy living. No, let's try this. Let's try that. Boom, straight to tablets. So. There's a lot of crazy going on across the world right now, but that crack pipe one, I could not believe it, Christy. And I was like, bro, what is going on, man? Like, uh, and you're right. <laughs> it's nuts, bro. It's, I mean, comedy sketches everywhere. It's just nuts. And then now, I mean, you know, it, it, and the thing is, people need to also understand this isn't about Democrat or Republican, right? I mean, so it's coming out, right, that Nancy Pelosi is the best trader in the world. Right, she's done. <laughs> I know, she, I know. She is the she's best like the wolf, the trader. Wolf of California, <laughs> ever. Right, you know what I mean. The wolf of the world, you should call her. Right, she's just she can world. blow everybody out. Well, then, but have you ever heard of Dan Crenshaw? Yes. So Dan Crenshaw, the guy for everybody that hasn't, the guy with the patch on his eye, who you know seemed to be an awesome guy, right, for a while now. In the last few months or whatnot, this doesn't, doesn't surprise me anymore. Because the last few months or year or whatever, he's been kind of, you know, different. A rhino, showing his rhino self. Um, but come to find out, this dude's even a better trader than Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> so that's a Republican. This isn't about Democrat or Republican. This is about good versus evil. This is about an establishment against we the people, basically. You know, right. I mean, and... You're so right, man. And you see me, I'm so lucky in this way. And everyone who knows me knows this. I don't even know what the Democrat, Republican is, Labour, Conservative. For me, they're all the one, honestly. And I know there's some politicians that are doing good and they seem to be doing good across the world. And that's great because that's what they're meant to do their job. You see, if a plumber comes into your house and fixes your toilet, you don't then all of a sudden go, wow, look at this guy. That's what they're meant to do. 
plumbers are meant to fix it. So people in charge are meant to take care of people. They're meant to. So I'm not, I'm not being horrible, and I'm glad there are some good ones out there that seem to be doing good work now. But the way I look at it is I don't trust any of the politicians, not one, not any side, because for me, they seem like they're all on the same side, man, and you've just highlighted it right there. You've got two of the world's yeah. best brokers right now on Nancy Pelosi and Dan Crenshaw. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and I mean, here's the deal, bro. I mean, we could just extend on that and go... Are you comedy for Joe Rogan and Tim Dillon, bro? Huh? Are you actually writing comedy sketches here? Is that what you're telling me? Well, I mean, it's kind of easy, right? But, um, <laughs> but I mean, this is the thing, right? I mean, we'll stay on this, you know, not Democrat and Republican thing. It's good versus evil. We'll go with the Bushes. The Bushes started wars, okay? The Bushes started these wars that filled their pockets because they were into the oil industry, right? right. But also yeah. filled their pockets because all the, uh, the, all the weapons, they were in, invested in all these weapons companies, okay? okay? Not only that, Halliburton, who went over there and fixed everything after it was all destroyed, the, the construction company, they owned that too or had a big part in that too. I mean... And then they tell us they started it over weapons of mass destruction that wasn't even there. Hundred percent. And then they I, tell I us they started again with Afghanistan or wherever it was at first because of 9-11 that they did. Bro, that, that was the one that changed it for you know? me. The weapon you see the weapons of mass destruction? That weapons of mass destruction, bro. Like, we had Tony Blair, who was literally Bush's sidekick in that over here, and they lied, they tortured people to get false confessions, and they went to war. And for me, that, on top of the trillions that were lost by the Pentagon, on, on top of the, the UK phone hacking scandal by all the media, it's done. It's done. Somebody said it last night. There was a great, I can't remember what I was watching, but it was a meme, and they said it was some kind of meme. It may have been on Timcast or something like that, and he was talking about, in the 60s, you couldn't trust none of these people. In the 70s, you couldn't trust none of these but 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, but now you can. <laughs> you know, it's, right. it's, no, man, these people are no, 100%. Sorry, man, you well, go. I just wanted to say that bit there. You're right, bro, but that's what happened. Like, that's what happened with this thing, like with Trump, right? So I've followed President, I've followed Donald Trump for a long time. And the main reason why I started following Donald Trump um, even before the internet, and it was actually a, a actual term, you know, follow him, you know, uh, but was because when I, I listened to rap in the 90s, I listened to rap for a long time until I found out exactly what it was, and I still listen to some, but it's it's all, you know, it's not mainstream, but uh, so it's not like the ones that sold their soul, but whatever, but so, but all these rappers, bro, in the 90s are talking about how they want to be like Donald Trump. I'm the black Donald Trump. I'm this Donald Trump. I'm that. I'm the ghetto Donald Trump. I'm the Donald Trump of my hood. I'm the Donald Trump pissed. I want to meet Donald Trump. And I'm like, who the hell is Donald Trump? You know, I'm like 15, 16, 17 years old. I'm like, who is this dude? Well, like in 98, 97, 98, I end up seeing him on a show, David Letterman. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he was a late night yeah. guy, you know, David Letterman. He was on there, and I watched him, found out who he was, blah, 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 boom. And I kind of followed him ever since then because he said something that night that really stuck with me all my life. Um, basically, he said, you know, if you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. Haters are a confirmation that you're doing something right, right? And I'm like, well, that's cool because um, I felt like I've kind of had some people hate on me all my life. There's different <laughs> things that, you know. So I'm like, all right, well, then that makes I'm doing something right, right? So I, I get excited now when people hate on me. Well, and then I followed him some more, and then The Apprentice went out, came out and all this kind of thing, and we watched that, which, you know, um, whatever, whatever. And I just followed him and followed his success and different. I read, you know, not really books, but I'd read a lot of different quotes from him and stuff like that. I look up quotes and stuff on the internet about and all this. But the bottom line, if it was Donald Trump or somebody else, when I found out that it wasn't a politician running, I was voting for them no matter what. Because we were told all our lives that politicians are no good, lying, dirty, whatever. We've been told all our lives that we're voting for the, be for, the, for the least of the two evils, whatever the hell that means. Why is there any evil? Why are we voting for any evil? 
We were going to vote for yeah, the least no. of the two evils. You know what I mean? Like, why isn't there an evil and a good? Like, what does this mean that we're voting for the least of the two evils? So just that saying right there shows you that Republicans and Democrats are all in the same thing because it just means that one might be a little more evil than the other. But if the other one's still evil, then what the hell does that mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what, like, you know what it should be? It should be. It should be you vote for the best of the be- best of the two goods. Do you know what I mean? The best of the two. Not exactly. The other, not the lesser of two evils. Exactly. So, you know, it's just, it, it's been so crazy. So, but, so then somehow, some way, and I know how we did it, you know, the media is a powerful force. I mean, you got to give it to them though. You know what I mean? These people have kept us a, a, asleep for a while. These people have pulled a lot of things. They, they almost won. Let's put it that way. They're not going to win, but they almost won. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they were able to, figure out how to get us from going from not trusting politicians to trusting politicians and not trusting businessmen who what Donald Trump Donald Trump was like it was like I, I just couldn't understand how people just couldn't see it right but um I think a lot of people are seeing it now and I'll quote Q one more time he said you got to show them <laughs> we got to show them you know what I mean you can't just tell people. Sometimes you have to show them. And that's why I'm saying that I don't feel that these people are really in control because all this stuff that's been happening ever since Joe Biden was inaugurated, when I said, I mean, the, the freaking second hour of his inauguration, he's signing these, these things that just straight screwed everybody. And I mean, they're telling, you know, the whole time they're telling you Donald Trump is a, a he hates women. He's a, you know, a womanizer and he hates women, right? And he's this, you know, sexist. Well, then the very first or the second thing that they sign, they basically kick women out of everything because they just said, oh, now, not only, you know, now a man can compete against a woman in college sports. As long as he just says he's a woman. Because this dude at, at Penn, I don't know if you've seen this. I can't, I think it's or her, its name is Leanne or something like this. It's a swimmer, beating, like blowing people out of the water. It's, it's nuts, right? There, there's, it's a dude that says he's a girl that is blowing all the college records out of the water, beating everybody, laughing them and stuff in the swimming pool, right? Well, That's this crazy. dude still has a penis. <laughs> You couldn't make this stuff so up. So he's on the girls' team. They're swimming. So when you swim, you don't wear underwear. So when you're in the locker room, and I mean, I've, I've read some different uh, quotes from his teammates, right? Okay. So it, it just gets weird, right? So he's a dude that says he's a chick that is undressing with chicks in the locker room, okay, with a penis still, but this dude that says he's a chick, that's now a chick, says he's a lesbian chick because he still wants to go out with women. So it's a dude, Why? a chick, but he still wants to be with chicks, and he's undressing in front of other chicks, on his team, and they are upset because he gets aroused. I guess they are. Wow, man, <laughs> I'm speechless. Is that not crazy, I'm bro? Speechless. What the heck, man? That's mad. That sounds. Like, I, I'm sorry. That, that that I don't even know what to say. That's this is where we've gone to, man. It's crazy, crazy. But so, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, so for normal people, right? Like for normal people. How, like, this is like, it had to be forced. These people can't think that a normal person is going to think that that's okay. No, man. It's just but yeah, when I found that out, I'm like, dude, at least this dude mustn't be, you know, when I found out about it at first, before I read those quotes, I'm thinking that this dude's, you know, he was gay. So he liked dudes, and then he said he wants to be a chick, but no. He says he wants to be a chick. But he still likes chicks. 
So to me, no, he's still not. a dude that he's a guy that just said, I'm going to take advantage. And for one, I'm going to beat everything in the world on sports. You know, everybody, I'll have every, I'll have every swimming record ever on in sports. And for two, I might get to see some naked chicks all the time. <laughs> My gosh, man. It was, and it was obvious that, that, that was going to happen, Christian. It was obvious well, that was going to happen. Obvious that was going to happen. Does Joe Rogan know about this yet? Has he started talking about this one yet? Because uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was definitely obviously going to happen. I, I'm not sure if Joe Rogan um, talked about it or not. But um, yeah, it's just it's it's just it's such a crazy situation. I haven't seen if Joe Rogan talked about that or not. So I think he might have a while back. Um, but it's crazy, I don't know. Crazy man, that's crazy. Where, where's it going to stop? Where is it going to stop, man? Without a doubt, most of the world now, without a doubt, knows something's up somewhere. Either the government, either mainstream, either both, either all this woke stuff. I've said it before with the woke stuff, and I'll say it again and again and again. You see if it's that good. You don't need to take away everything from the past. Do new stuff from now. Write new woke stuff, and if it takes off, it takes off. If people want to buy it, they'll buy it. And if people don't, they don't. And then you've got something there for people if they are that way inclined or that way minded or whatever. But... It's just crazy, man. I mean, what's that saying? Everything woke turns to shit. It's so true, man. It's just, it's beyond, it's beyond, beyond words. Right. I can't believe all this, bro. It, it is. It, it's crazy. And then, you know, let's, let's, I wanted, cause I wanted to talk about what you've been posting about with these different articles, right? About, um, you know, the gas prices going up. Yeah. yeah you're going to get a heart attack because your electric bill is going to go up and, and this is going to happen, and kids are going to start having it because of this and this and this. Man, if anybody doesn't realize what that's all about, they're just preparing you for what they know is about to happen for people who got the shot, in my opinion. And I'm sure everybody else, you know, a lot of other people feel that same way. But, I it's mean... the elephant in the room, man. It's the elephant in the room because, literally, it was like every other day... There seemed to be another article. If you, if you, the energy price rising was 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 ridiculous. I mean, that got shared. That was viral. That was some doctor that went on TV in the UK uh, or on on some Wales online site, and he was saying that basically um, energy price rises are going to go up. They were talking about ch- children will get chest infections and ill health from energy prices rising up. Then you've got what other ones are there? There was. Um, having sex at a certain age. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. There's been so many. There's been so many. The cold weather, shoveling snow, um, and every single one of these things I'm saying leads to a a heart attack. And and just like you say, they're obviously covering for rises in heart attacks. Now, uh, you know, I've never seen so many different excuses of new things that are happening, and some of them are beyond ridiculous. Shoveling snow, you know, energy price rising. (sighs) It's 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 uh that that that's the. Problem. I mean it's it's that's nuts, the but had over here. So there's two things because I actually mentioned this underneath your video too the other day, because and this hasn't been talked about in a long time. Um, people have kind of I mean I'm sure they haven't forgotten about it, but I haven't seen a bunch of people talk about it. It's either what we said already, that they're preparing us for what they know is about to start happening with people that got the vax, right? Or 5G. I because say that. you know, my you mom, know. my mom even said that to me. My mom said about pollution. She said about uh, no, it wasn't my mom who said about 5G. It was one of my cousins said about 5G. My mom said about pollution. I mean, these guys are double vaxxed, man. Do you know what I mean? And my mom's triple vaxxed, and they're they're looking into this, going, well, what's going on? Their friends are getting well, sick around them. I mean, I know right. a lot of people, bro, who have had problems with this and. That five, it could be 5G, it could be the vaccine, it could be a combination of the two together. But do you know what isn't happening? Unvaccinated people, we're fine. Most of us are fine. Right. right. Oh, yeah. There's, and there's we will a be. denominator for you. <laughs> because we, the thing is, um, we are God's 
greatest creation. And I'm starting to believe that our immune system is the greatest creation inside of us. And would our creator, our father, created us to be like and how he created us to work with the earth that they've taken away from us, basically, and not taught us or told us about is ridiculous. To me, the most healthiest thing any person in this world can do, right? And this is through a lot of research and a lot of knowing because, you know, I do this. Like, I can't think of the word, but like experience, I guess you would say. You take 15 to 20 minutes a day, you put your feet in the grass, and you sit in the sun at the same time. It's called grounding and then obviously just getting sun. But from the sun, you get vitamin D. Vitamin D boosts your immune system. If you can get it like God provide, wanted us to get it instead of having to take a pill, why not get it like that? Because in those pills, I promise you, there's some things that aren't good for you. Yeah, man. The second thing, when you ground, when you put your feet in the grass, I'm not going to get all medical, right? But when you put your feet in the grass, and I might be, I might get the negative and positive part of this wrong, right? But there's free radicals. Whatever the good free radicals are, leave your body. And whatever the bad free radicals, I mean, whatever the good free radicals are, free radicals are, Come into your body and replace the free, the bad free radicals that go out of your body. The bad, I can't remember if it's negative or positive, which one goes in and which one goes out. But whatever one's bad, these bad free radicals that leave your body when you ground cause inflammation. The new ones that come in help keep away inflammation. Inflammation is the cause of every single disease, even dementia. So losing your mind is from inflammation. So if you put your feet in the grass every single day, you can't get inflammation. What's that mean? It's powerful. You can't get sick. If every disease is from inflammation and you're putting your feet in the grass to, to make sure you don't get inflammation, well, then what? You don't get a disease. And then you could do this and sit in the sun and get vitamin D at the same time for 15, 20 minutes. That is free. All it is is time. Now, of course, time is, you know, people say time is money and this, that, and the other thing. But you can have all the money in the world and die tomorrow. Have health than wealth. I want both. But... I wouldn't want to be wealthy and, and dying or wealthy and going to get shots in my arm thinking that somebody's got to save me when I had a creator, the person who created me, the God, the God, the creator who created me, created us to work like this. Like it's, and I could go on all, I mean, there's so much other stuff. I mean, fasting and everything else. I mean, we'll just say this, right? Just break the word breakfast in half. What does it say? Matt? I think we're, I think we're what is breakfast breaking in half? When you break the word breakfast in half, what is it? What is it? What does it say? Literally breaking the fast. <laughs> break fast, right? Breaking so break fast. fast. So they named the meal that they told us was the most important thing to do in the morning. Might not break be. fast. They named it exactly what we're doing. So we... <laughs> Are breaking our fast, which is breaking us fast. Because this is the deal, right? If you eat, it takes it takes six hours after eating for your for your um food to your uh for everything to digest. Yeah, thank you. It takes six hours for everything to digest, right? So if it takes six hours and you eating at eight a.m. in the morning. Or you wake up at six, let's say you wake up at six and you eat, or whatever. You wake up and you eat within 30 minutes of waking up, like they tell you to do. They tell you it's the most important thing to do is eat breakfast. You are freaking digesting food in the background all day long. 
So your subconscious mind, instead of picking up on other things and working on other things, is only working on digesting food all day. Because if you eat 30 minutes after you eat, wake up, you're going to eat lunch, then you're going to eat dinner, and it's all going to be within six hours of each other. You may sleep for eight hours, and that happens, but then you wake up again. And the whole time that you're awake and conscious, your subconscious mind is working on digesting food and not doing anything else. See, when you put it like that, that sounds a bit mad, doesn't it? Well, it sounds like they're trying to kill us. <laughs> yeah. I've got lots of Hindu friends and lots of friends from different races, actually. And quite a lot of my friends from like who are Hindus, who are Muslims, they fast. They, they fast. Obviously, I've got Christian friends as well. And, and people who are not even religious who, or, or have any spiritual beliefs that fast from a health point of view. And that breakfast one. Seems to be Bro, a big I, one, man. Seems yeah, to be the big I break. One. I, I I fast every day. I used to do it four days a week. I started, but I fast for seventeen hours a day. Now I say seventeen hours a day. It actually lasts into two days because I stop eating. I make sure I stop eating at eight p.m. at night, and then I don't eat again until the next day at one o'clock. So it's actually like you know, it's but it's seventeen hours straight that I don't eat, and then I'll eat for whatever that is. I'm not. You know, I'll eat lunch, and then I eat like sal a sal a big salad with all the you know the good stuff from the ground. Now, who knows what's sprayed on it or whatever, but that's another story. At least I'm trying, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> bro, that's funny, man. <laughs> but um, funny. but so how do you feel, so, do, uh, Christian? Dude, how do you feel from that though? Like, how, how, how dude, do you I feel, feel like I have. I feel like I am reversing my age, bro. Cool. I feel at 43 years old, I feel so much better than at 39 when I started doing all this stuff. Now, at 41 is when I started fasting. So two years about I've been fasting. Dude, I feel like I'm reversing my age. I look so much different. Now, I wasn't a fat dude, but I was bigger. I was, I mean, I'm five foot six. I was 210 pounds. So I was pl- like, I was... Looked like I was busting out of my, like my face and all. Looked like I was busting out of my skin and all. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm short. You know, and I mean I don't know, bro. It, it's <laughs> you just feel better for it though, and you can notice the difference. But the thing that's the is, thing. that's another thing. This is the thing, bro. Those three things that I just mentioned, right? Those three things that I feel that if people do that, they'll be healthy. I feel that we will never. I feel I'll never need another man-made medication ever because I do this, right? But those three things that I just mentioned, guess what they are? Free. Free. Yeah, man. Exactly. You don't even have to pay for this. But they got you thinking you got to pay big pharma hundreds and thousands of dollars to keep you healthy. And a doctor, you'll tell, most doctors will tell you you're nuts when you t- <laughs> if, if, if they hear me telling this. Oh, you're nuts. That doesn't work. But the doctors that know what's up, I bet you Dr. Zelenko would say that I was I knew it was up. I bet you Dr. Artist would say that that was true. Yeah. You know, the real doctors, but the doctors that are all got big form up their butt, they can't tell you that's true, even if they know it's true. Because if they tell you it's true, they out of business. True, man. That's so true. That is a fact. They would be out of business in seconds. And then one last really quick, really, really quick. Just let me throw this in. And if anybody out there has allergies, get you local honey, and you'll never have allergies again. That's enough for our health That's kit. true, man. i got to say, listen, and I know local honey, I've sp- spoke to you about that, but where we are, I don't know whether it's local or not, but it's the honey that we that we get, so it might be, but it works anyway, man. I mean, I have honey all the time, all the time. Dude, I take one juice. tablespoon of honey a day, and then I put it, I, 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 because see, when you fast, when I fast, when you fast, you can drink black coffee and water, right? So that's what I do when I fast. I drink black coffee. Now, after I eat lunch, I drink one more cup of coffee, and that's when I take a, a spoonful of honey, um, and then I also put a spoonful of honey in my coffee, um, Just so people know, if you just want to put a spoonful of honey in your coffee or in your hot tea, that might not work because a lot of the the nutrients or whatever it is that that takes the allergies away get killed in that hot coffee. And I'm
speak in from I went from eating um I went from actually taking a teaspoon of honey to finding out you can put honey in your coffee and just started putting honey in my coffee without taking a teaspoon. And I did that for about two months. I got allergies. I'm like, what the heck's going on? I asked my boy that did a lot of, you know, that, that me and him have been doing something. I'm like, dude, I'm getting allergies again. He's like, you still taking honey? I'm like, yeah, I put a big teaspoon in my coffee every day. And we looked it up. And sure enough, they said that that could kill what we need. Right, it's not a bad thing to do, but if you're doing it to get rid of allergies, you got to take it uh, at least a teaspoon of honey by itself, um, or in like some orange juice, something that's cold, not something that would be hot and that could kill, you know, whatever it is that you know that the nutrients. Or what, I don't know. I doubt nutrients is the right word for it, but whatever it is that makes you not have allergies. Right, I'm not a doctor. But <laughs> I know it works. Put it that way, because I had the craziest allergies. And I mean, that's the thing that's also mad. You know, I started taking local honey at about thirty six, thirty seven. All my life, opiate, didn't it? dude. All my life, I had allergies. My mom and dad was taking me back and forth and back and forth to the doctors. All like they used to say when I coughed, I sound like a foghorn. Like it would wake up the whole house. <laughs> dude, all they had to do was give me local honey, bro. All they had to do was give me $15, $15 for a pint or a quart of local honey or $16 now went up. Even honey going up, right? Honey went up a dollar. <laughs> but he, even the honey's going up. But so, but like, instead of all this nonsense, like, dude, I don't know if y'all, you know, they have this, these songs over here, sipping on that scissor and all this kind of thing, which is the, you know, the, like the pain killing cough syrup that uh -huh. you get that has like um i can't remember like hydroxycodone or codone in it or whatever it is I, I used to know all about that but they were giving me that at six seven years old before they were even singing about it before they were rapping they were about even it singing about it bro you know <laughs> before they were rapping about it i was taking scissor <laughs> instead of getting prescribed or having them say hey just go get your son some local honey and he'll never have allergies again so for 36 you know years of my life they i said, lived a miserable like on no certain times, I lived miserably when I had those allergies, you know. Bro, and bro, they know that as well. Listen, I'm telling you. Oh, they, 100 they, they, know they know that, that stuff, man. They know that stuff. That a million point, percent, they know that. They've, they've switched. They know it, it all. Yeah, of course, man. Like you, you think a hundred years ago, yeah, Roy. Think of like our grandparents, our great grandparents, how they were living because they were here, they were living, and you know. That's where I, that's where you get most of the knowledge from is like have honey, do this, go outside, get fresh air, all of these things. And and I used to say this right at the start of the pandemic. Actually, they're, they're literally doing everything that you they were told not to do. You know what I mean? When you were younger, it's like like the opposite of being well and healthy. And it's things like honey, natural remedies, going out, getting fresh air, meeting other people, being social. All of these things that we're told by our grandparents and, and and how do you think they know because they were told by their parents because the, the, there wasn't doctors and hospitals everywhere there wasn't national health service in the uk there wasn't none of that in the early 1900s that just wasn't right they had to people figure it all existed. out man people exactly existed. people carried on people helped each other these old wives tales sometimes are, you know these remedies they're not even I, I, that's the wrong thing they're not called old, old wives tales they're called old remedies and they were Exactly. They made these words up, just like conspiracy theory. They made these words up, like old yeah. old wives' tale and stuff like that. No, like you said, that's an old wives' remedy. Definitely. <laughs> like that's that's some some lady that that was like, man, I'm tired of my my family being sick, and they just kept trying to figure it out, and also led by God, by the divine, and you know. Hey, look, why don't you try this? Hey, why don't you try that? You know what I mean? Like, but... It was, think about it, 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 yeah. Think about it. This is, like, factual, what I'm about to say here now. So let, let's just let's just take a step back for a minute and look at this year. And, and you just look at how people used to live in the early 1900s, how they were, their morals. A lot of them were religious. A lot of them did go to church. A lot of them had family values. A lot of them had all of those things. And let me just point something very, very strange out here. That generation and their children are the oldest living humans that we've had on this planet. 
they're the ones that live, and I mean, in general, the whole population, if you were to average out the ages, they're the ones that hit the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. It wasn't just wealthy ones, it was all of them. So they were doing something right. Now, that could have been morally, that could have been health-wise, that could have been, um, uh, and it probably was, a number of things. But the health thing, something happened to all of those people that was different to the people before them because they lasted longer in, in their droves. I mean, you've still got, my, my nan's still here, she's 92. Do you know what I mean? And it, 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 there's my other ones aren't, but you know, you didn't have that. You didn't have that a hundred years ago. That, that right. wasn't um, happening. So something they did, and I think it's a mixture of everything. I think it's family values. I think it's doing the right thing. I think it's honor. I think it's health. I mean, you know, I, I do, I do. And you know, there's so much to look at there. And and we'll probably live longer. Well, we will because we're doing those same kinds of things. We're applying those same kind of, and it's not just the health, it's everything. It's the thinking process. It's the thinking for yourself. It's the, you know, we've all got those stories from our grandparents and our uncles and aunties and their parents where things were different back in the day and stuff like that. And I think a part of that's coming back, bro. I really do. Well, it is. You're doing it. I'm doing it. Other people are doing it. We're kind of, well, we are. We're thinking for ourselves. We're kind of finding ways to use health and the natural remedies and all sorts of things like that. It's what, what do they call it? The awakening or, you know, but it's, 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 it's on, it's, it's really happening. It's really, really happening. And to get back onto the other stuff with the people who are double jab, triple jab, they're waking up too. Exactly. I don't know how or why, but they are. And I wish just like you said at the start, I wish that they've done it right at the start of this. Of course I do. But for some reason it's happening now. For some reason. Well, it really is. I think if they wake up soon enough, I think that, and they just stop getting them, and they're able to get through it. I think I, it, it won't last, right? And I believe anything is possible with God. So if they repent, which doesn't mean just ask for forgiveness. Repent means change your mind, change your thinking, right? So if they repent from thinking that the vax was good, and now, okay, God, I'm going to trust you instead of trusting man, Right. And just change their mind. I believe that they'll be fine. And a lot of people that I know, you know, got the first one, but didn't get the second one or got the second one was like, screw this with the booster. And they start realizing that, man, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this. Now, there's going to be some. And I'll make another Q reference. He said four to six percent will be lost forever. There's going to be some that hang on and don't ever want to. And it's ego. It's going to be ego more than anything. They're just not going to want to admit that they were wrong, in my opinion, because you, you, I mean, it's too obvious now to see that these people are nuts and they hate us, right? <laughs> I mean, sadly, gracious sadly, sakes, right. they're giving out crack pipes. But so, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's just what we, what, what's happening right now is in my opinion, the most amazing time to be alive. Um, other than maybe when Jesus walked this earth. But like, well, yes, for, for the people that are seeing it, for us, I mean, we are actually living in biblical times. We are living in times that need, like if we don't do something, we're done. You know, so like if we don't stand up and do what we need to do and continue to speak the truth and wake the world up, we're done and we are part of this. And, it's, the, um, it's, it's the only way, man. It's the only way if we... And truth, it, it, I've never been so sure of stuff in my life as I am now. Never, never, never. And exactly. it's I'm just, I'm just all in on this truth. You see that 4 to 6% you're saying? Sadly, when you said that, I did have a few people that I know pop into my head. I was thinking, Oof, that'll probably be them. Hopefully not, but it'll probably be them, the ones that will never, ever believe they've had the walls put over their eyes. But have you ever heard of something called the rule of thirds? The rule of thirds, no. Well, basically, it was something I heard. It may have been on Tim Cast or something like that. I think it was, actually. And it was to do with, actually, America, where they said when they were going for independence against England, there was actually only a third of the people that wanted it. A third of the people didn't want it. And it was the third in the middle that were okay either way. But they had to convince the third in the middle. And I think that's what's happening now. I think, originally, there was a third of people that were all in on this. There was a third of people who were all against this, which is all us lot. And there was a third in the middle. And I think what's happening now is our third, the people that were all against this, has grown. 
and we're getting more of those people from the middle. So as soon as we get to two thirds or over two thirds or near to there, which I think is on its way now across the whole world, um, that's when it starts to tick big time. And I think that's what's happening. And do you know what's happening just very quickly is it's a lie somewhere. Some, like, it doesn't matter if it's the same lie, but it's a government or a mainstream or both of them lie. So it could be the parties that happened in the UK with Boris. It could be in America, certain things that happened with Pelosi trading. It could be um, people going out for restaurants when they shouldn't have done leaders. It could, it, there's thousands of lies that happened in the last two years across the world. And I think there's that many lies now that in that third in the middle, the people that didn't know which way to go, but went along with it anyway, that third in the middle now, the majority of them have seen at least one lie. And that's what's swaying them. And they're sitting there going, they lied to us. And in England, I can tell right. you it's like that. In England, they are literally, they're not letting it go. Even the, even the media keep questioning Boris and he keeps not even answering the questions. But he, it was really big over here, bro. I mean, me personally, I'm not into royals, I'm not into all that, but some people are like, well, listen, the Queen couldn't even bury her husband, but then other people are going, well, forget about the Queen, we couldn't even go to our funerals, and you're having parties, and now it's not just one party, it's two parties, it's three parties, so that, that's that's a lie that a lot of people have gone, hold on a minute, over here, and you've got lies like that all over the world, but there's hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of lies that have happened over the last couple of years, and that middle third, They've seen a lot of these lies, and they're grabbing onto them, and that's what put that's what's pushing them into our third. So, right, I think that's what's happening. I think it's a combination of many things, but it's lies. It's basically lies. The lies have been found out. The truth is coming through. That's what I think, anyway. I can definitely, I can definitely agree with that, bro. Um, but I just realized we've been on for about forty-five minutes, and I think that this all needs to be heard. And Boom. if we keep going, people are gonna. Stop. Right, well, let's cut it there. Stop listening. We'll cut it there exactly at the end of what I just said there. I'll edit it, and I'll cut it right at the end there of what I just said. Sounds good, bro. And that'll be the end, bro. That was good, man. And do you know how I'm going to title this? I'm going to try and put this on YouTube, and I'm going to put... I want to, too. I'd like to put it on my YouTube, too, if possible. Yeah, we'll do it. I'll send you the um, unedited version right now, and then you can... Edit that you can edit it where you want at the end. But well, why don't you send, why don't you send me the edited version? Perfect. Because I like Perfect. how you just said, yeah, just send me the edited version once you get it. Because if I don't, I'm gonna listen to it again. If I decide not to put it on my YouTube, I'm definitely gonna be putting it on like Bit Shoot and Odyssey and all the like everything that won't just smash me down. So, I'm gonna but I don't think it. that we really said much in that that YouTube is gonna kill us for. It. Because we didn't well, talk I've, bad about I've been it, getting dude. away with it. I've been getting away with it because they banned one of my videos, and I might even keep this bit in, actually. In fact, I'll, I probably will keep this bit in. We won't end it there. I might keep this bit in. That's fine. <laughs> but um, they banned one of my videos last year, and when they banned it, I basically put it out onto loads of places, platforms and everything, <laughs> saying they've just banned it. So they ended up blowing it up. So ever since then, they've never banned a video of mine. They've only shadow banned it and stuff like that. But... Every time I'm putting stuff out, I'm putting links or I'm saying I'm putting things that are factual. So even if they don't like it because it doesn't hit the agenda, there's links in there or there's facts in there or it can be verified and so on and so forth. So I've been very, very lucky. So you never know because we're talking right. absolute facts and things that have actually happened here. Plus, we're talking opinions and we've, all, we've both said, we're not, well, you said you're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. We're just talking about what we are actually seeing with our own eyes. This may stay up. We'll see. Right. And exactly what I've experience so yeah definitely well that sounds awesome bro um it was great talking to you definitely let me know when you get your you, you're ready to do a zoom because then we'll do this on zoom on camera definitely man we'll do one next week if you want at the end of next week this time next week it sounds like a plan bro boom and bro i'm not even going to edit this now i'm literally just going to send this over to you because that bit that'll work end, we'll keep that in yeah. <laughs> and i'll get yeah. this on youtube now all right, bro. Sounds good. You be blessed, Matt. Be blessed, bro. You take care, man. Thank you, bro. All right. Thank you, too, man. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> take care, bro. Bye-bye, man.